Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest for More, and I'm back at the property where we had one tenant squatting in a vacant unit he was not renting and using without permission, and he is still there. As you can see, we have lots and lots and lots of updates. We'll tell you what's going on, and I want to tell the whole story of this property too because that's pretty crazy as far as what the county wants from us and that whole situation as well. So this is the property when I first bought it after I cleaned it up a bunch, and we had a diesel mechanic move into that space with the open garage door right there. It's like 5,000 square feet. He ended up renting the backyard and eventually he ended up renting all those kind of storage buildings on the right as well. Then there's this building over here that was rented by a detail shop after I bought it. For a little while, they stopped paying rent. They moved out. I've had it vacant. And I haven't really tried very hard to get it rented because we've had a lot of issues with the county. So the county issues came from that property right over there on the right. I went by it really fast, um, right there. So um, this whole place was vacant when I bought it. The seller had actually vacated every tenant, which was really not a good idea when you're selling a property. But um, the property on the left, I eventually rented to a church. A church had been kicked out of another property. They needed a, a space to move in. This property is zoned for a church, so there's no problem with that. So we moved in the church. We have another garage in the very back that's rented to someone else for storage. And um, the building seemed to be going just fantastic after I bought it. I paid $865,000 for it. It's about 13,000 square feet total when you put all the buildings together. Almost four acres, has three water taps. Um, you know, all fixed up and rented and, and ready to go. This place is worth a million and a half dollars all day long. So I was pretty excited. And then the problem started to happen with this property. So we got the diesel mechanic in here. We got the church in, the detailer. Well, first the detailer stopped paying and um, just disappeared. At least we didn't have to evict him, but he just disappeared. Well, then um, someone or the county had been tipped off to my YouTube videos where I talked about renting to a church. And they contacted me and said, hey, you can't rent to a church. It's against the site plan. And I'm like, well, it's zoned for a church. What's going on? So um, there's a site plan that was done in 2014. And the sellers gave me almost no information on this property. It's kind of a, a divorce situation. One party knew about it, one didn't. The one selling it had no idea what was going on. And um, I looked at the site plan from 2014. And in the fine print, it said that building was allowed to be used as a grocery store or retail. And this building could be used for mechanic. The other one could be used for mechanic or detailer. And so um, I thought, so I can't have a church because of this site plan from 2014. This site plan was created to create kind of a truck washout and part of it um, and some truck parking, do some other stuff, but none of this stuff was ever completed for the site plan. So um, even seeing that, I didn't, if they didn't complete the site plan and do what they wanted to do, I didn't realize they still had to follow every single rule from the site plan. But according to the county, that was the case. And so the county came to me, wanted me to um, do some work, put in French drains, redo the parking lot with crushed asphalt, um, do a little bit of landscaping work, and um, not rent to a church. <laughs> so we had multiple meetings with the county. I talked to them. At first, they were being very, very difficult, just incredibly difficult. They tried to say the mechanic couldn't be in this building at one point um, because it wasn't approved for it, even though the site plan outlined it. Um, I, I brought in an engineer to help with it. Um, just a, a crazy situation. And the county threatened to shut everything down and close all the businesses in 30 days if I didn't get them a site plan right away. So I almost got a lawyer, but then I ended up actually talking to somebody I knew in the local government around here. And I think that helped quite a bit. And uh, they laid off me a little bit. I had another meeting scheduled. Completely different people in this meeting. There are some of the old people, but some new people too. And the new people in this meeting were very reasonable. Like, oh yeah, you can have a mechanic here, it says right there. And oh yeah, you can do this, it's okay. Um, you know, we're not here to ramrod you into, you know, everything. We want to work with you. Much different meeting. And so at that point, um, we outlined what we want to do, what we're going to do, got the engineer involved. And, um, you know, when we first started this, the engineer, you know, the, the county wants to amend the site plan to allow a church there and some of the other uses and different stuff. And our engineer's like, okay, we can do that for, you know, a couple thousand dollars, no problem. Well, then after subsequent meetings, the price tag raised to $11,000 for the, just the engineer's costs because the county was requiring so many different things and wants so many things done. And then um, after another meeting where people are being more reasonable, that cost had dropped back down to 5,000 for the engineer or in that price range. So a little more reasonable. That doesn't count any of the work we have to be done, have to be done, just the, the site plan amendment. So we got to this point. Um, 
The church's lease is up in December. The diesel mechanic has been doing pretty good. We've got the engineer who is getting started on this, but they're backed up. I've got a bid for the crushed asphalt there. Um, we had the building inspectors walk through the church to make, their, make sure it was safe. There was nothing wrong with it. They tried to say I redid all the electrical and all the HVC and all this stuff without permits, which I didn't do, and my videos show that. Um, but they walked through it. Um, they said that was okay. It was safe. And so here we are still waiting for the site plan stuff to go through. And, um, and we ended up finding the French drains were actually installed that needed to be done. So that was nice. And along the way, I've been communing with the county, talking about them, showing them, you know, what we found, what's going on. And um, some are great. And some are like, oh, you're doing nothing. You're not communicating with us. We're going to shut you down. So uh, it's interesting <laughs> to say the least. And I've talked to other people in the county too. And it's not just me. This is happening too. This is not, they aren't targeting me. They aren't going after me. Um, it seems to be uh, something that's happening quite a bit. So and another interesting thing was um, supposedly, and the county even told me this, they're not supposed to go after people or enforce these things unless they get a complaint from someone. They're supposed to get a complaint. It's supposed to cause a problem, a nuisance. And their reasoning, which they told me was, well, we saw your YouTube videos so we could do a self-complaint. But nobody actually complained as far as I know. It was just them deciding they could self-complaint and there was some controversy about whether they should be doing that or not either. But anyway, uh, moving on. Here's This used to be a, a marijuana weed operation um, before I bought it, not while I had it. <laughs> and so, um, you know, no problem with that. But for me to have a church in here, that's a whole nother story. So um, this all happened. And then while I've been making some progress and, and getting closer to having the site plan completed and work done there, again, it takes a very long time to get paving work done, engineer work done, things like that. Um, we had the issues with the diesel mechanic and we'll talk about that. So what happened was the diesel mechanic rented this bigger space in this, you know, kind of Quonset hut type um, storage area. And um, his bathroom stopped working. We had the septics gone through. They're actually fairly new septics, but something was wrong. So we gave him a key to the small repair shop where the detailer was before and said, hey, you can use the bathroom while yours is being fixed. We fixed his Thought it was all good. Turns out like a month later, someone saw his Jeep in that spot. He just had a, a Jeep in there. Um, he doesn't speak amazing English. So I always have um, his friend who I talk to in text and say, hey, talk to this guy, let him know that. Told him, hey, you can't have his Jeep in there. Um, it's not his property, you can't rent it. And said, okay, we checked. He took his Jeep out, thought everything was good. Then, and then last week, last week I, drove by, I drove by the property and found, and found this. this. Right. Right. So he had two vehicles in there. There's his Jeep, truck, all this open. He'd been working on those cars. And um, we'd asked him before not to park vehicles in front of the shop. Turns out we are allowed to have vehicles parked in there per the site plan before, but still he wasn't leasing this spot. And um, this was just crazy. So I, I talked to him, he is in the Jeep out there. He said, you know, wasn't speaking very good English at that moment. And then I text his wife, who I knew spoke very good English. She didn't respond to me for a while. Then she started talking to me later the next day. Said, oh, no, he doesn't have stuff in there. He's not working on them. And I'm like, I have videos. <laughs> we can see it very clearly. And she said, oh, okay, I'll talk to him. We'll get all that out right away. And um, so there was everything there. And the next day I drove by again because, you know, this is a, something we need to check on. So I'm um, checking to make sure everything's out of there. I'm like, oh, the garage doors are closed. That's a good sign. Of course, there's a truck parked right there. Um, and then I was going to walk in, but I'm like, oh, I forgot my keys. I don't have the keys to it. So I got out and thought, all right, I'll just check, see if the door's open, walk inside. And I did get out and checked on the door. And guess what? It was open. And then, of course, there was another surprise after I opened the door, and I'm a little bit ahead of myself, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful day outside in northern Colorado. Um, open the door, and then I'm like, oh, some of the stuff is gone. There was more in here before, and there's a guy right there working on the trucks still. So I talked to him. Again, he didn't speak very good English. Um, told my text, his wife, the text the tenant's wife, him again. 
talk to them again. Um, and this time the wife had said, well, I really want to rent this space. So another part of the story is she's wanted to rent this space or the space where the church had it for a while for a car dealership, but it's not approved for a car dealership. And, um, I've told her that you can't have a car dealership here unless we get it approved for the county. It might be a while. They keep hassling me about that. I'm like, hey, you know, we're trying to work on it. She's like, well, I talked to the county and they said you're not doing anything. So, of course, that made me feel great about the county after we've been going through all this stuff that they are still saying we're not doing anything. But <laughs> um, talked to her for a while. We discussed things. And um, she said, I really want to rent this space. What can I do? I'm like, you can't have a car dealership. You can have a detailer or... You can have a mechanic shop. That's all they'll let you have. And so um, what happened was we started negotiating, talking about it. She said she's going to check with the mechanic she knows. And we got a lease agreed to, signed, and paid for. So <laughs> they are now leasing that space. They have it for rent. And um, they better not have a car dealership there. I've got some video of cars there. They're not for sale yet, I don't think. But um, they're supposedly using it for a mechanic shop. But then I saw some more stuff there with my cameras I've got set up, which I've showed in my last video. Um, I'll have a link to those below if I remember to have them. They don't need wireless, which is amazing. And they've been, there's a truck there that's been parked there that kind of said truck washing on it. Well, on my cameras, they were washing a truck there the other day and they were using the water from that shop. So, um, this is what it looks like now. Like I said, they've got some cars lined up. There's no sale signs on them. There better not be or else um, they'll not be there long. Um, but we checked and there was water usage at this shop in the last month. It wasn't being used before. So uh, they will be getting a bill for the past month or two water, electric. We're going to be charging them some rent for their use of that property as well. And um, yeah, so we are definitely going to... Uh, get back some of the money and space they've been using since then. And since we signed the lease, did that, they've actually been out there washing the lot. They moved the railroad ties or the, I don't think they're actually railroad ties, but some kind of other, um, you know, landscaping logs around. And so now we've got them in this building. We're collecting more rent. They're my second largest tenant behind the grocery store in another building I've got. So um, we'll see how all of this goes from here on. But it kind of worked out in a way. I know a lot of people are saying I'm soft and too easy on tenants and um, I should kick them out immediately or kick them out of the whole property. They shouldn't be renting from me anymore. Uh, it's really difficult to kick out a diesel mechanic and especially, um, I don't know, if, you know, I could kick him out of that small space, but I don't know if that's grounds to evict him from the other space. You never know what the courts are going to say. They've always paid rent on time and they do pay quite a bit of money. So it's not easy to go through that process and it's not something I'm, I want to do right now. I think this is a much better solution and hopefully this works out in the long run. And I try not to get emotional about these things either, right? It's very easy to get mad and pissed off and just want to, um, you know, go after people. That's never worked well for me. And I'm not saying I haven't done that before. And if people, you know, intentionally try to defraud me or rip me off, which has happened a few times, I will go after them and make videos about them and try and make their lives miserable if I can. I'm not saying I won't ever do that. I have done that. <clears throat> um, Chris Reed is an example of that too. Um, but uh, with our door SEO, I have some a video on him. But um, in this situation, I think it's best to keep a calm head, work through it, see if we can figure out a solution that works good for everybody. Should he have been in there? No, absolutely not. Should he have talked to me? Yes, absolutely. Um, am I pissed off or mad about it? Not really. Honestly, right now I've got a lot more things I'm worried about um, than this. So it's annoying, a little bit frustrating. In the long run, I think it's taken care of and things will work out. And um, hopefully from this point forward, uh, they're good tenants and we don't have issues like this. So there's the full story. Hopefully it works out. Of course, if they start putting cars up for sale, we'll have more videos and talk about that. We'll have more updates on the county thing. We'll see um, when we end up doing the crushed asphalt and regrading the lot, which I said I have a bid for to do that. Um, we've got a few other things to do as well. So we are making progress in this property. When it's all said and done, I may sell it. And this tenant has actually expressed some interest in buying it at some point too. So um, another reason not to burn a bridge there. But um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. I'll have more updates on 
my flips. We just bought a new one of those with the post occupancy agreement, which I talked about. The laundromats, the car wash, the liquor store, other commercial rentals I've got, other residential rentals I've got, and I'm sure there'll be some other new interesting stuff I've got um, coming up this year and next year and the year after that as well. Take care and be back soon.